Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the GCSE last minute series. If you haven't seen the series yet, it's just me giving you last minute tips right before your GCSE exam. This one here is going to be GCSE chemistry. Got a nice CGP book right here. If you don't know why I still have this chemistry book, it's a very old one, but I'm going to be giving you some tips right before your GCSE exam and hopefully you can implement them right now because this is a stressful time and it can be very difficult to know what you need to do because like you don't have much time anymore so I'm just going to give you some quick fire tips just so you can watch this video and then go back to your revision and as you can see today I am standing up because I just wanted a little different sort of vibe from this video so yeah let's just get straight into it. A lot of my science tips are quite transferable between the different sciences so if you haven't seen my GCSE biology last minute tips video you can check that out as well because most of the tips I say in that is going Going to be similar to this one but i've got some chemistry specific advice that i want to give you now as well firstly it's really really important to do past paper practice for chemistry and obviously this is important for all the sciences and practically every subject but for chemistry i feel out of all the sciences the examiners copy questions so much you need to be able to get like those mark scheme points out of all the sciences you get very very similar questions across the papers in chemistry they literally repeat questions word for word sometimes and if you just know your common definitions and those like common things like ions atoms molecules you really need to be able to talk about those very well and let me just give you a few examples of things that always come up. Stuff on bonding, you always need to be able to describe the bonding between ionic bonding, covalent bonding, sometimes it might be graphite, graphene, always always in it. So find like a six marker on it and literally just memorize the mark scheme for it because it's always going to be the same. Because if you get a three marker on it but you've memorized all six marks, if it was a six marker, you've got twice as much to talk about. So always try and find these six markers on all these topics because that way, worst case scenario, you get a massive six marker. In this case, if you know everything about it, it's the best case scenario and just memorize those mark schemes especially for chemistry knowing mark schemes is so so beneficial for chemistry whether it's also a definition of relative atomic mass definition of an isotope or you know the classic question where they say why two isotopes react in the same way because of the same electron configuration it's always the same thing you need to do a lot of exam practice so I just recommend opening up PMT going through their topic list and just doing questions and questions and you really quickly realize how similar the exam questions are when you do them topic by topic and if you finish the PMT questions and go to exam pro if you type up what I'm typing right here on the screen you can find all these different worksheets that you can do for free online and it's questions for days and I know you don't have many days right now but it, there's so many questions you can do but I would say especially for chemistry really stick to the topic based exam practice obviously don't neglect your past paper side especially if you struggle with timing in sciences but it's very very important to get a healthy balance between topic based exam questions as well as past paper practice because sometimes past paper practice can be very slow especially if you know how to do the questions but you're just doing it for the sake of it you're really trying to focus on those difficult topics and to really try and improve them. Now that being said I find that chemistry out of the three sciences is usually the most difficult one to deal with in the exam. What I mean is like the maths in it specifically is very very complicated sometimes. It's not as straightforward as biology or like in physics where you just have to learn the equations. There's a lot of chemistry involved in the maths as well and that's why it can be very difficult. So I really recommend putting a lot of time into the maths because you always get a lot of quantitative chemistry questions where you have to do like the most calculations and whatnot. If you know how to do those it's literally free marks because it's always the same thing every time sometimes they give some really ugly six marker questions on them so really focus on those past paper questions and try and get all those mathsy questions in as well but honestly most of the time when you're doing those math related questions in chemistry if you know how to do them it's very simple like you know your atom economy you're finding out like relative atomic mass I didn't really put a lot of detail in this in my biology last minute tips video but required practicals for chemistry at least can be very very confusing because you just don't know what's going on when there's so many different like values like whenever you look back at your practicals you'll just see like 20 centimeters cubed of this one more per decimeter cubed of this you just don't know what to memorize whenever you're looking at practicals so I recommend not actually learning those specific quantities you don't need to learn the fact that you put 20 centimeters cubed of whatever solution into whatever it's really about trying to get that end result and whenever you see the mark schemes on these type of questions especially when it's those six markers where they want you to just describe the entire method you can tell that they don't want you to mention every step so overall when you're trying to do a practical question I personally like listing them in bullet points so I just have bullet points of everything I remember in terms of steps about those practicals which I try and learn before the exam and then below those bullet points I'd also put the independent variable the dependent variable and then controlled variables because in GCSE it doesn't really matter if you have it all in bullet points they don't really care that much but it helps you a lot because that way you can see if you've mentioned enough points because if you just put three or four sentences in you might have not actually even mentioned six points to even get all six marks so if you do it like this if you put more than six bullet points worth of information in you're practically guaranteeing yourself 
myself about five or six marks out of six every single time. Now in terms of learning these practicals, I really recommend watching videos of other people doing those practicals so you can see why they're doing what they're doing. Don't memorize the method of the practical if you don't know what they're trying to test for because in the exams what they like to do is get those same practicals but put different things in to make it look alien and so if you recognize what the practical was trying to actually get out what like you were testing for that practical you'd see that it's the same exact practical i think people put too much emphasis on learning the required practicals word for word you really don't need to do that just have a brief idea of how each practical works and just try and like blur out the methods for each of them so just try and like close your book and just write down what they do in that practical see if you missed any important steps and then do some exam practice on it as well you can always find a chunk of six markers on every single practical so just really practice those and you'll get in the hang of it. I recommend right before the exam so literally like an hour before just to spend that time properly trying to drill in those practicals into your head because all the other content by then should have really been learned so right now I'd say mainly focus on just getting your entire topic list and making sure that you know how to do each part and you know the content for most of it because for chemistry when you know the content and you know how to answer the questions most of the time you get a lot of the questions right obviously they do start pulling out questions where you just don't know what to do because it's completely different to what you learn but most of the times in chemistry I feel it's quite easy to work Work out what type of questions they ask you because they're usually pretty similar or at least the first couple of marks in every question is always free marks they're always like simple multiple choice questions or just statement questions and if you know how to do those type of questions it's free marks for you and then those last couple of questions near the bottom of each question can be difficult but those ones just come with practice and so that's where the topic based exam practice and the past paper practice comes along and apart from that that's literally it I want you guys now to just look at all the topics in your chemistry specification and work out what topic you feel that you just don't know anything about or if you really really are struggling on the required practicals to start on those try not to make required practicals your priority because when you are starting to do other topics you realize that those required practicals are embedded into those topics and so if you learn them with the topic it's easier to understand why they're doing it so for example with the rate of reaction practical if you learn it whilst learning rates of reaction you can see why they're doing what they're doing and that way even if they give you a completely different practical in the thing that has the same premises you still know what to do because you're still seeing what they're seeing and usually when they ask you questions on a required practical they also ask you questions about the topic that that required practical is based on and yeah that is it so i wish you guys the best of luck for your gcse chemistry exams and i personally am revising my own a level chemistry right now so i wish you guys the best of luck for your exam and i hope i do well in my own end of year exam too and yeah i want you guys to go straight to practice right now i don't want you wasting any more time if you do want to watch some videos that's fine but if you're doing anything else on youtube get off right now i couldn't care less what you're trying to do you need to revise